All right, everybody, hail and welcome to this episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. My name is Jesse, and if this is your first time watching the channel, uh, I upload content here once a week about Norse heathenry, Norse heathenry related subjects. Lots of different content. You can go down to the playlist section of the videos and check out everything that I've uploaded thus far. Uh, but today's episode is very special because I am joined here today with a very good friend of mine, Mr. Greg Strong. Thank you, Greg, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And Greg is the scald yes. of a local heathen kindred in the uh, Middle Tennessee area called Raven Moon Hearth. All right, guys, so uh, today is going to be sort of a glimpse into somewhat of what Raven Moon Hearth is. We're going to be talking about some events that uh, the hearth hosts and is a part of in our area here in Middle Tennessee. Um, and Greg has been kind enough to take some time out of his busy schedule to uh, kind of give us a bit of a glimpse and an insight. So um, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on here in the video. Be sure to check out the description for ways that you can uh, you know, follow and support the hearth if that's something that you're interested in doing. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. All that's going to be down here. Uh, make sure that you check out all the end screen information for ways that you can support, follow, all that good stuff. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Greg, for being here. I've got a couple things that I do want to talk about with you. Um, uh, number one being, what is the nature of Raven Moon Hearth? Uh, I mentioned earlier that this is a, a heathen kindred of sorts, right? So you guys are a collective and a group of, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm just going to kind of turn this over to Greg. You tell us what Raven Moon Hearth is and then how you guys kind of take your approach to heathenry. Um, well, we are a uh, inclusive group of uh, heathens. We do um, stuff from all over, so I guess you could say we're pan-Germanic. Um, we uh, take things from Anglo-Saxon, from uh, Icelandic uh, heathenry, from pretty much anywhere that we feel called to. Um, you know, we, like I said, we're uh, inclusive, so you know we don't have any problems with anyone as long as you're a good person and uh, you're interested in the gods. That's all that really matters to us. Gotcha. So, so, you know, for a lot of folks that may be watching my channel, I follow a, you know, it's Germanic paganism, Germanic heathenry, the Norse gods, Odin, Thor, Freyr, Tyr. You know, some of these names are very familiar to a lot of folks that are watching this. Um, but when you get into some of the things about um, some of the different branches of heathenry, when you talk about it, you say, you know, uh, Anglo-Saxon um, versus Norse or, or the Icelandic model of, of heathenry. There's so many different, I guess, branches of heathenry. Um, how does the hearth incorporate so, like the different branches of heathenry into something that everybody can kind of you know get along with and, and work? With? How does that How does that work for you guys? Um, well, I mean, like I said, we uh, pretty much take little pieces from uh, wherever we can and uh, until it feels right. Um, for instance, uh, one of the things that we've just started doing, uh, we came across a, um, a <coughs> ritual and uh, video that I saw and uh, started adding god poles to our um, own uh, loads. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing that. Um, we came across another thing um, that had, um, basically at the end of rituals, um, we will pull a rune and ask if the gods have accepted our offerings. Um, something new that we found that uh, is really exciting because it gives us kind of an idea of whether um, you know, we need to work harder on our next ritual or you know, whether. Um, well, I mean, you know, whether we need to consider different offerings next time. Um, yeah. yeah. Kind of see how the uh, how the fates or how the norns uh, perceive the things by 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 kind of. I guess uh, dipping into the well a bit, right? The well, Ur, exactly. The, the, you know the, the you know the the Ur the Ur, You know um, all of this stuff, guys. It's, it's really fascinating, and I've I've been fortunate enough to attend one of the hearths. Uh, is it, a, it is, was the the Ostara event that was uh, a couple months ago? Was that a was that a 
a hearth only event, we have sort of something that you invite the public to because I was fortunate enough to be there for this event. It was really a wonderful experience. You guys can, if you don't mind, uh, talk a little bit about the, the Osara event. There's a video I'm going to link in a card here that you guys can talk, you know, check out where we talk a little bit about Osara, Historic, uh, stuff like that. But Greg's going to maybe touch a little bit about how the hearth does it or, or what, what it's about for the hearth. Um, well, we have uh, three different uh, hearth style events. Um, we have uh, hearth only, where it's literally only members of the hearth and their immediate family, so you know your wife, your children, etc. Um, and then we have uh, <coughs> invite only, which was Ostara, um, where it's you know friends of uh, friends of the hearth, um, people who you may be uh, thinking are interested in joining us and whatnot, and then we have open events, um, like we have a couple coming up here soon. Um, yeah, um, for us, uh, Ostara was an invite only, and um, you know, again, being a friend of the heart, we thought you would be a perfect member to come and hang out with us and uh, experience that, enjoy some good food, and some good times. Yeah, and it was a wonderful event, everybody. Um, you know. Like I said, check out the uh, annotated card which I posted up here um, for Ostara, a store. The, you know that that springtime beginning of uh, you know the, the the celebration of victory over the colder winter months and welcoming the warmer springtime uh, season of welcoming new life. Um, but one of the things that we want to talk about today, guys, um, is the uh, like, like Greg was just talking about. The, the heart has different style of events. One of the open events that uh, he, he's talking about, that we're going to be actually going into a little bit of detail right now that's kind of open to everybody, is one that is coming up very soon. And actually, uh, by the time this video gets out to you, it'll be out in, uh, I believe it's two weeks, on June 20, the weekend of June 21st, which is uh, their specific hearth event called Soon the Bloat, right? So I'm going to turn it over to Greg and kind of give you the opportunity to, to let the people know what Soon the Bloat is maybe how it originated, what it's designed for, and take it away, Greg. Uh, well, uh, Suna Bloat originally was supposed to be a um, day at a Viking marketplace. Uh, we had envisioned having um, lots of vendors. Uh, we initially invited some SCA fighters to come join us and show us uh, what that would have looked like. Um, we had a ton of games, um, lots of food, and, and ritual. Um, so it, it's evolved um, since uh, the original conception now and uh, unfortunately some of the stuff didn't work out like the SCA fighters um, which would have been amazing but uh, unfortunately it just didn't happen. Um, so this year it's more or less a midsummer event uh, where we have a really cool ritual written by one of our own members, uh, Kyle, who uh, it's his first time doing it and he is very excited to do it, uh, to lead it, and uh, I think he's going to be amazing at it. Uh, we also have a ton of really fun games, including the standard ones, uh, axe throwing, um, archery, and, uh, and it's, it's open for like everyone. Um, we specifically have like smaller bows for children if they want to try. Um, so it's family friendly. Very much so. Uh, yeah, we, we actively invite families to come and uh, spend time with us. Um, just because it, it's harder for families to find events like that. So many of them are adult only, especially in the heathen community, because there shares to be a lot of uh, drinking and whatnot. Um, and we don't discourage um, drinking, but you know, we try to make it so that's more of a night event, so uh, the kids can come and have a uh, great time as well. Um, again, because you know parents deserve a chance to come out and you know, enjoy yeah. their films as well. And that's that's a wonderful thing, you know, guys. Um, I've talked a lot about the way heathenry works on this channel and the fact that heathenry was and, and is, I feel. Um, you know, it works best at the kindred and you know, grassroots level. Um, how people interact with one another in person. It's not so much about comments online, you know, discussion topics in a forum. All that stuff is great in terms of building your knowledge, perhaps, you know, getting to know some people in a semi informal environment. But when it comes right down to it, when it comes to us growing and developing as humans, uh, having that interaction one with another in a real 
tangible, hands-on sort of way, you know, playing games with one another, talking with one another in person, uh, sharing knowledge with one another in a very, you know, down-to-earth level. I think it's great that Raven Moon Hearth here in the Middle Tennessee area has that sort of grasp on the importance of heathenry. Um, and that you're so inclusive about it, you know, it's not like you're saying, hey, you can't be a part of us if you're not this, that, or the other. Um, the, the inclusiveness, the, the welcomeness, the, the, you know, the open door policy uh, that you guys kind of have uh, is very refreshing, and um, I think it's great. You know, so Soon of Bloat, guys, is going to be coming up here uh, on the weekend of June 21st. It is a, what, a yes. three-day long, a three-day weekend? Yes, essentially. Um, arrival is on Friday, and... Uh, straight through until uh, Sunday uh, afternoon. Um, and there's on site, there's like camping yeah. there on the ground. So it's like, guys, if you, if you are in, in the area and you want to come out to this, uh, go down into the description because there's going to be links for you to follow for the event on Facebook. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you details. There's also going to be a link down in the description to purchase your uh, tickets for the event. Uh, purchasing the tickets obviously is going to benefit the hearth uh, because this is a big event, guys. This is a public event and this, you know, there, there's things that need to be paid for and there's you know meals that are going to be cooked and there's time that's going to be spent so get your tickets now if you're in the middle tennessee area what are what are, have you have you guys had a lot of people outside of the middle tennessee area come out or, or is it pretty much kind of isolated to the our you know middle tennessee area um we actually have had more than a few um we've had people coming from as far away as uh, florida and um we get uh, routinely people from alabama and Kentucky show up, um, and we actually had a couple of people come from Missouri not too long ago as well. Wow! Um, so which is really, really kind of nice. And I know there are people out here watching that are in all of those areas. So please, if this is sounding like something you want to be a part of, there's there's several weeks. Well, we got a couple weeks now uh, from when you're watching this to prepare. Um, but check out the description below. Uh, for, for for all the information, the, the ticket sale uh, prices, uh, where it's located at, um, which is just a little bit north, was northeast ish of Nashville, Springfield, Tennessee area. And if I can just add, sure. um, the prices, uh, ticket prices are twenty dollars per adult, and uh, children under uh, twelve are free. And uh, that does include uh, breakfast and dinner for the appropriate days um, for even oh, wow. your family. Um, so like I said, twenty dollars. To me, that's more than reasonable. That's basically just covering the price of the porta potties and the uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the food. Um, you know, we don't we don't ask for uh, we don't ask for a lot because you know a lot of uh, a lot of heathens and pagans are um, not the wealthiest. No, yeah, we're we're, we're simple folk, yeah. you know. But uh, we, we I think a lot of us will agree that we look to help our own and, and do things yeah. to benefit our own. So it's great that the hearth is. is you know, looking at things in this way to not rob people, you know, uh, and, and, you know, you, you'll, you'll spend $20 going out to eat for, for, for two people these days. Um, and here you are, you know, you've got, you know, 20 bucks for four meals, for four meals you know, and then you, you're able to spend the night, you know, uh, you bring your camping equipment, it's going to be a really fun time. This is my first time, guys, Midgard Music, myself uh, and my wife and some friends, you know, I'm going to be there. Um, here supporting the hearth uh, as a vendor um, and I'm hoping to see some familiar folks out here who support this channel and some maybe some new faces that are out here uh, you know interested in supporting the hearth what I want to talk about real quick before we end this video Greg is um, I mentioned earlier uh, at the beginning of the video that you are the scald yes. for, uh, for, for Raven Moon Hearth um, can you tell the folks here that are watching that aren't familiar what is a skull? What does the skull do? What does that role mean? And what is what, what are your, what are some of your responsibilities as a skull? Well, um, a skull in our tradition is basically the bond of the group. Uh, so it's my job during ritual. If we have uh, any um, anything special that needs to be read or said, um, so like uh, we did. Um, an Odin bloat not too long ago, and uh, I read uh, Lumetal um, for the, that part of the bloat. Um, and there, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into the skull, but um, it's basically you know, uh, being knowledgeable about uh, 
the heart itself as well as um, the lore. Uh, trying to learn as much as you can and to bring that back to the group and to, to help them you know, learn as well. Um, basically, it's just trying to be a uh, like, well-read individual who can um, you know, help to impart that knowledge to uh, our, our uh, uh, fellow uh, party members. That's great. How has that helped you develop? I mean, you, you've been a pagan for I'm not sure how long or this particular human path, how has your role in the hearth helped you develop individually? You obviously have an official title or an official role in a community, um, but how has that helped you develop as you know, on your own personal, individual, uh, you know, cultic practices? Um, it's actually helped me quite a bit. Um, first off, I learned uh, a ton more about um, our, our histories. Uh, I love reading books and learning uh, new things. Coming across the amazing uh, YouTube channels like yours and uh, Ari Thurger's, uh, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing to learn stuff, um, and to be able to bring that back to the group and have those conversations, um, and it, it's for me it, it's a lot of fun because having those conversations, um, you get so deep into different places, um, you know, learning names and families and. Stuff. Um. History is a big part of, of this path, I think, you know, understanding the history and the roots of things. Um, so it makes sense to me that the role of a scald, you know, the bard, the, the storyteller, the, 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 the you know, portrayer of history and, and, and documentation of things has such an important role in our society as humans and in our communities. Um, in our respective tribes, kindreds, hearths, whatever you may want to call it, um, I think it's a tremendous, tremendously important role. Not just to not, to not just bring back the importance of the old historic text, but then to continue on with our own versions of stories and, and continue that you know uh, pattern. Uh, because you know a lot of what we know now uh, was lost because it wasn't written down. It was it was verbatim, word of mouth, so we, we learned the importance of writing things down, documenting things down, sharing it with our generations, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, so it's, it's a very impactful role in the human community. That's great that you become a part of that in, in, in the heart. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. And you brought up something kind of interesting, too, that I neglected to mention. Um, one of the responsibilities of uh, being a scholar as well <coughs> is to... Uh, Take the stories from um, our uh, fellow hearth members and to pass those on. Um, you know, to to boast of mm. our people. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I can't speak for any other kindreds, but I think that uh, our group is amazing. And, uh, we're full of storytellers and um, people who are just amazing at doing what they do. Um, like I said, you know, uh, one of our members, Kyle, has a uh, Ritual for Sunablu, and awesome. it's his first time, um, and mm. he's written a, an amazing one. Um, and like you know, our our whole group is full of uh, just amazing, special people. So. That's fantastic. I am personally excited to not only hear and experience the ritual that Kyle has written. I, I know Kyle on a personal level to some degree. Uh, we've exchanged you know formalities a bit in. in personal dealings, um, and as well as other Hearth members, Greg and, and, and other people in the Hearth, I've, I've had the pleasure of, of dealing with, um, you know, interacting with. I am personally really excited about Sunablu. I hope you guys, if you're in the Militancy area or surrounding areas, will check out all the information down in the description. If you're interested, become a part of this. This is a public event. Come check out and see what is in your areas. Um, at this point, before we end the video, Greg, I want to kind of turn it over to you. Anything else that you want to talk about as far as the hearth? I know there's, you mentioned you have not just Sunablu, you got, there's at least one or two other public events, maybe one coming up after Sunablu. I'm going to kind of roll the carpet out for Greg and let him tell you guys about what you can look forward to and where you can find it. Okay. 
Um, we do have uh, another really big event coming up in October, uh, the weekend of the 4th, and um, it's called Shadow Moon. Uh, Shadow Moon was specifically invented to get a chance for heathens and pagans to come together and uh, intermingle. Uh, a lot of times, um, like when you go to an event, it's either heathen or pagan. Mm. Um, and like Focused on one right. path or the other. Yeah. Yeah. And for some reason, uh, a lot of heathens and pagans don't intermingle. Um, and like I said, th this is specifically, you know, to get people to come and like have a good time. Like we have heathen events. We also have uh, uh, people who will come and do uh, like pagan uh, rituals. Uh, we try to invite uh, people who are um, pagan vendors so that they there's more of that sort of stuff in there as well. Um, instead of just all the you know really cool stuff that we enjoy, you know, handlers and knives and whatnot. yeah, um, all the Norse aesthetic side, the dramatic heathenry, yes. dramatic paganism. Yes. There's so many, there's so many different paths <laughs> out there, guys. You can you know you can get on a road, you can travel a road, you can get in that vehicle, you can drive, and there's all these beaten paths. Yes. You can and kind of kind of take off on and find the new adventures on the right. Yes, and uh, we also try to do. Um, workshops at uh, both of our events. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have uh, as many as I would like for Suda Bloop, um, but we, uh, we do plan on having a bunch for Shadow Moot, and um, again, we try to do a little bit of both. Uh, last year at Shadow Moot, we did a, uh, a Burning Man ritual, um, which was amazing. Um, there's pictures online if you want to go look up uh, Shadow Moot uh, 2018. Um, and we have a lot of fun, and we, we invite everyone to come and join us. Uh, again, like we're all inclusive. Like as long as you're a good person and you're interested in the gods, that's all that matters to us. That's, that's great. So everybody that's watching, down in the description, we've talked about Sunabloat. Yep. We've now talked about Shadow Moot. There's going to be information down in the description that if any of this sounds interesting to you, and you're in the area, you're in the Middle Tennessee area, or willing to travel a little bit to get to the area. For any of these events go down into the description and check out all the details that are going to be around those events okay um i know i'm going to be at sunablo my wife and i a friend of ours we're going to be there uh vending our wares uh talking to some people i think we've been doing some uh some live broadcasts either through the youtube channel and or on the facebook page because i want anybody who can't be there to kind of see what's going on in our area so i know i'm going to be doing that uh for sunablo i don't want to say something that I can't commit to, but I, at least at this point, definitely want to be at Shadow Moot because that sounds like a really fun time. And um, I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting new people, seeing new people. If you guys check out Raven Moon Hearth, everything that you need to know about them is going to be down in the description. They got a Facebook page, they got a Facebook group. Uh, you have a website. We do, uh, ravenmoonhearth.org. Uh, and please come check us out. Yep. Uh, we also have the. Um, <clears throat> we also have the information for Shadow Moot as well as the, uh, the, the link for uh, to buy tickets through that page as well as the event page on uh, Facebook. Tremendous. So all that, guys, is going to be down in the description. If you're watching this now, just wait to the end of the video. Head down in the description. Everything that you need to know about Raven Moon Heart is going to be down there. If you're in the Middle Tennessee area looking for some like-minded heathens, pagans, anybody that is into this sort of you know polytheistic Norse dramatic eclectic sort of approach to things uh, definitely check them out and support them in any way that you can and I hope to see some new faces out here at uh, Sunabot this year I think Greg is looking forward to meeting some new folks this year as well 